It's really tempting as a newcomer to want to get behind the controls of a big modern plane like the A320 or the 747. Flying those big birds isn't easy though. You're not likely to get as much enjoyment out of it as you might think unless you have a good understanding of the fundamentals of flight. I'm going to provide you in this video with a learning path to start from the smallest of airplanes in the game and work your way all the way up to the 747. There are a lot of airplanes in Flight Simulator 2020 and even more in the premium and deluxe versions of the game. The suggestions I'm going to make are all in the standard version of the game. I want this video to be relevant for anyone who's coming to Flight Simulator and it's likely as a newcomer that you probably bought the standard edition since you aren't too sure if you're going to enjoy playing Flight Sim in the first place. With all that out of the way, let's switch over to the plane selection screen. The planes in the game are broken down into five different categories. You've probably guessed it, but the place to start as a newcomer is with propeller-based planes. A propeller-based plane has a combustion engine that's somewhat similar to the engine that you'd find in your car, which is driving the propeller. Things happen a little bit slower in a propeller airplane than they would either a turboprop or a business jet or an airliner, and that makes them really good for learning to fly. My recommendation for getting started with propeller-based planes is actually to use the Zlin Aviation Savage Cub. It's definitely one of the slowest planes in the game, but it's very simple, it has very few instruments, and it'll allow you to focus on learning the fundamentals of flight. When I first started playing Flight Simulator, I had a tendency to stare at the instruments a little bit too much. The great thing about the Savage Cub is there are very few instruments on the plane, so you do actually spend most of your time looking out the cockpit. It's also not a coincidence that this is the plane I use for most of my videos on this channel. Once you've got a grasp of the basics with the Savage Cub, I recommend switching to the Cessna 152. The 152 it comes with a traditional avionics stack, which means it won't have the fancy glass cockpits that you'll see in most of the modern planes in the game. Learning how a traditional avionics stack works is going to help you as you move forward in the game into the larger planes. It'll help you understand what's going on behind the scenes of those fancy displays in the 747 or the A320 for that matter. The 152 is one of the more popular planes for learning to fly in real life as well, so it makes sense to learn as much as you can before moving on to a more complex plane. There's one last plane you might want to have a look at in the propeller section, and that's the Beechcraft Bonanza. It comes with a modern avionics stack and the glass cockpit. It'll also get you places a lot faster than the 152 or the Cub will, so it can be a little bit of fun if you're looking to do a little bit more cross-country travel. It's also got great visibility out of the cockpit, which is a big plus in a game where there's just so much eye candy to look at outside. Once you've got a good grasp of the basics of flight, you're ready to move on to more complex airplanes. That's when it's time to have a look at the turboprops. The difference between a propeller and a turboprop is the way that the propeller is driven. In a propeller plane, it's a normal combustion engine that's making the propeller turn, which is generating the forward thrust. In a turboprop, the engine that's driving the propeller is actually a turbine engine, much more like something you would see on a jet. The propeller is still generating most of the thrust, but the turbine engine means that it can fly at much higher altitudes and much faster. So the plane that I actually recommend using is actually the Dayer TBM 930 right here. I really like this one because it's got a very high cruise speed, so you can fly very fast, and it's fairly simple as well because it's only got the single propeller. The King Air is a great plane, but the two engines makes things a little bit more complicated, and you still want to keep things as simple as possible for now. The visibility out of this plane isn't the best, but it's pretty comparable to everything else in its category. So once you've got a good handle on the turboprop, you're probably thinking it's time to jump into an airliner. And you wouldn't be wrong either. So let's go over to the airliners. All right, and what we got here? We've got an Airbus A320neo and a 747-8. So I recommend if you're going to jump to the airliner, definitely fly the Airbus A320 first. 
There are two training scenarios in the flight training that have recently been added to the game, and they're really useful for learning the basics of flying this plane. Once you've got a good idea of how the airliner works, you could probably have a go at some of the landing challenges with the 747 just to get a feel for it, see if you like it or if you enjoy flying it. It's a bit of a beast of its own. If you want to fly a jet engine plane, but you don't want to fly an airliner, I really enjoy flying the Citation. It's a small business jet, but it can fly fast, it can fly high, and it has most of what you would find in a modern airliner as well. It's also got slightly better maneuverability than the airliners, which is what I really appreciate about it. So that was my quick tour of all the planes you should learn and in which order in Flight Simulator 2020. What you're probably wondering now is how do you go about learning how to fly all these planes? You'll have to tune in to next week's episode for that. I'll go over the process I use when I'm trying to learn how to fly a new plane. Otherwise, as usual, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments below. See you next time.